Wiser men and women than me have said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Or in French, le mieux est l'ennemi du bien. And behind me, I have a budget Newtonian telescope that ain't broke, and today, we're gonna fix it. So, what are we going to fix it with? We are going to fix it with accessories that have been sent to me by Backyard Universe. I'll put the links down in the description. One of the accessory is a new secondary spider. So this will hold the secondary mirror. This will help achieve a more stable collimation as I have noticed that the collimation does shift no matter what I do. And it will also help us achieve better star spike shapes, which is always appreciated. Apparently the promise is also that it is so well machined that the star spikes in focus will be perfect and as soon as the system is slightly out of focus they will be visible as separate star spikes so it can even replace a Batinov mask maybe we'll see so that's one thing the other thing that we're going to put on is this little thing which is a primary mirror mask it will help hide the primary mirror clips that uh, create weird shapes that sprout out of bright stars in my images. I have three primary mirror clips that hold the mirror in place. And so we have three weird spikes in three directions. And the way to avoid those spikes is to simply hide them, hide those primary mirror uh, clips with a primary mirror mask. So this will basically cover those clips. Obviously, this will mean actually slightly reducing the aperture. As I measured it, we are going to reduce the aperture from 150 millimeters to 144.4 millimeters. This means that the total light gathering area, including the secondary obstruction, uh, will be reduced by 1%, or 171 millimeters square, as I've computed it. So that's perfectly acceptable to me if I can reduce those weird artifacts shooting out of my bright stars. Another accessory that came with the package is this. This is a 3D printed accessory that will effectively hold the secondary mirror and it uh, hides the back side of the secondary mirror to avoid having any light transluding through it. And it's already been uh, painted with some very matte black paint. So, okay, perfect. We're going to be able to use that. I'm not sure whether it's part of the kit. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll uh, clarify it in subtext here. The uh, secondary spider here costs uh, 160 euros or 159 euros, as I remember. The mirror mask for this particular model costs 49 euro. Um, these are available for other size of Skywatcher Newtonian scopes. So yeah, look at the link in the description. If you have an 8 inch or any other Skywatcher Newtonian size, chances are those accessories exist for them. And the goal will be to go from a cheap budget newt to something that is almost premium for a total cost because as a set those two together are actually 200 euros so you save 10 euros always something uh, but in total it brings the cost of the telescope plus the comma corrector slash focal reducer that comes with it to just 700 us dollars so still pretty cheap for a very fast f 3.45 probably something like f 3.55 with the primary mirror mask uh, but telescope super fast telescope that is quite cheap uh, obviously i will likely do some more up upgrades in the future like replacing this focuser but for now i'm leaving it on until it causes me more issues fingers crossed. So first let's get started with the installation. The easiest part seems to be the primary mirror mask. The primary mirror is at the back here and, and it is supported by four Phillips head screws that are just there. It's extremely easy to remove so that's what I'm going to do right now and then we're going to install the mask together following the super detailed instructions that actually came with the kit. Because I'll be handling a primary mirror while talking to you guys. I don't want to spit onto the primary mirror and secondary mirror. In a previous video I managed to just like rotate them away from me to avoid this issue. Uh, but in this case I'll just be wearing a mask to avoid spitting all over my mirrors. I, I don't like spitting on my mirrors. How about you? <laughs> so uh, let's get started. I've removed the four Phillips head screws and so I can just remove the primary mirror. By the way, this is obviously a do as I say, not as I do situation. Normally you'd want to make sure your telescope is horizontal. 
so that you don't drop anything like the primary mirror that would not be fun. Here we are with the primary mirror and you can see the three clips that retain this primary mirror and create those weird star shapes. Those are the three clips that we are going to be cover covering via this mask. So the next step will be for me to just remove with a Phillips head uh, screwdriver those uh, six screws that hold the three clips in place. Obviously, I'll want to do that with the mirror on a table. And uh, once that's done, I'll show you how it looks like. One of the delicate parts of the operation is that each mirror clip actually has a little metal washer on top. And so you want to make sure that once you remove the clips, you don't drop the washer onto the primary mirror. This washer will no longer be used once we've put the mirror mask in place. Okay, here's how it looks like now. And I can double check that the primary mirror doesn't shift in place, which is the case which is good because otherwise uh, it could cause some issues, but it looks to be fine. Obviously I should be wearing some gloves here, so another do as I do not as I say, wear some nice nitrile gloves or whatever to avoid anything, but I'm making sure not to touch the primary mirror surface. Obviously even if the edge, like uh, more specifically the outer 0.3 millimeters of the mirror gets some uh, grease from my fingers on, it's not a big deal because they're gonna be masked. Meh. Even with the mask, you can see that the clips could slightly protrude, so we're gonna cut them a little bit by a couple of millimeters. Okay, my clips have been trimmed. We're now done with the arts and craft part of the project and I can install the mask on the mirror. So this should be very straightforward. I still have the screws from before, so I'm going to place, and then I can place with the chamfer facing forward, the primary mirror mask. For now, I haven't tightened the screws. I've tightened them very loosely just so that they're in the threads. The reason why is that uh, you don't want to tighten the screws too much on the primary error. It's better for it to be too loose than too tight because if you press down on the primary mirror, it deforms the shape of the surface and you get pinched op optics, which uh, manifests itself as like triangular shaped stars in the end. So we want to avoid that. The proper method would be to be using some kind of piece of paper to make sure you can still fit it in between the clips and the primary mirror. Uh, but um, I don't like that method because it puts paper on the primary mirror. <laughs> so what I like to do is simply like tighten the screws while I'm holding up the primary mirror clips up and then make sure that I can actually lift up a little bit roughly like the amount of the thickness of paper and I can actually, and I can actually visually check that. This one is too tight and sometimes it's only one of the screws that's too tight so you can you need to make sure that they're both like in agreement with one another. Okay now that's fine. So when you're tightening or loosening the screws always small moves. Small moves Ellie. Now I can visually see that each of the clips can actually like lift up a very tiny bit like roughly the width of roughly the thickness of a piece of paper. And I'm done with the installation of the primary mirror mask. If things were too tight, I'll see triangular sh uh, star shapes and I'll be able to remedy that very easily. Uh, so I'm gonna, just going to remove some of the dust as much as I can and then place that back into the telescope. Next up will be the secondary. Now, the instructions said I should remove the secondary mirror first before removing the spider. Uh, but from experience, I know it's almost impossible because the tube is too small. Maybe with the end eight inch version, it would be easier. For now, the only the easy way I can do is simply unfasten the knobs here on the side while I make sure to hold the whole assembly and we should be able to remove it easily. So here is the whole assembly. I'm going to next remove the primary, uh, the secondary mirror assembly from the spider. The spider is so flimsy. Uh, now, of course, it's under tension, under normal use, but I completely understand why I would be losing my collimation very easily. I don't understand why Skywatcher does that. They could make a Newtonian telescope for maybe $800, $900 that would have a great focuser, a great spider, and like a primary mirror mask, like everything that you need. It would be perfect. It would be a fast scope, like F3.5, like this one. And everyone would love it, love it and it would be like, completely blow away all of the competition, but they don't do that. And of course they would have a better focuser than that piece of garbage that is attached with mine. 
And by the way, talking about the focuser, people both in Europe and the United States have told me they received this focuser. But when I looked at the review in one of the magazines, like I think it was Sky at Night magazine, it was the better model of the focuser. I'm almost wondering whether it was only the first batch just so they could get good reviews. That would not be good practice, Skywatcher. What I'm going to do next is remove the three collimation screws here and then remove the center screw which holds the secondary in place. So while I'm fine with dropping the, the spider, I'm not fine with dropping the secondary. So I'll be holding the, uh, the secondary the whole time. Now I'm actually removing the secondary from the spider and there's a spring in, be in between the two. So we need to keep that spring because we're going to reuse it. Okay, here we are, the secondary is in my hand and this is the spider and this is the spring that we're going to be reusing. And I will now also remove this front part of the telescope. It's also held by only four Phillips screws. Here it is, properly removed. I'll set this aside for now. And to go ahead with installing the secondary, I'll put this kind of like secondary light blocker uh, or butt plug as I like that word <laughs> uh, onto the secondary mirror. There is a little uh, two little actually tensioning screws on the side that I can use to, that can loosen a little bit. So I'll be able to put the secondary on. Okay, here we are. This is my secondary diaper. Perfect. It's avoid, it's to avoid leaks. <laughs> Light leaks. <laughs> now I can tighten things again. The second thing that I'll do is now that I have my little secondary mirror diaper on, you can see that the back of the secondary mirror here has some marks. <laughs> And those are marks from the collimation screws. The kit comes with a washer that I can glue into place to basically make collimation more stable, easier to achieve, and to avoid uh, marking the soft aluminum that's underneath. So yeah, let's absolutely put it on. It's optional, but it's a good option. Now, one of those things that I've done is I've checked the alignment as per instruction of the spider to the tube. And we want those uh, two little holes here that are effectively, that create a line that is perpendicular to this, to one of the veins, to one of the spider veins here. We want to make sure that this vein basically points to the focuser tube. And the focuser tube for me, it's there at the bottom. So we'll want to make sure that the mirror is installed so it faces down towards the bottom, towards the focuser tube and towards the camera in the end. Now, the instructions say that I should mount the spider onto the scope first and then mount the, the secondary mirror. But for the same reason that I took the secondary mirror plus the spider out in the first place, uh, no, it's too small. An 8 inch would be fine, the 6 inch looks a bit too difficult. So I'm going to install the mirror first and then install the spider inside the scope. So for that, I can just include, insert an included screw into the spider, slide onto this, the spring that came with the secondary mirror on the, uh, on the Newtonian in the first place. Now I'll adjust this distance later. One of the things that I want to make sure of is just like I showed earlier, we'll want the secondary mirror to be pointing this direction down because this is going to be the direction towards the focuser. Then I can simply insert the collimation screw. Those are screws that came with the kit. Uh, now is as a good time as any to note that I have some felt paper here on the spider veins. This is this was done actually by Backyard Universe, but normally they don't do it. Apparently I'm a VIP, so they did it for me. But it's suggested to add this so that you have like less reflections and it makes everything better. So yeah, why not? I mean, we're being perfectionists right now. We're fixing something that doesn't need to be fixed. So we might as well go all the way. This looks awesome. This looks so much better than what we had before. We went from this flimsy little thing to this thing that comes with a diaper. Amazing. <laughs> Seriously, I feel like this is going to be so much better. And I do have the uh, secondary mirror that is pointing downwards towards the focuser with those, uh, those two uh, collimation screws that are perpendicular to the spider vein that will point down. Everything is looking good. So. It is time for me to place this inside the telescope tube. I actually tested earlier, my tube seems to be a bit tight. So I might have to put some force into it. Hopefully not too much, we'll see. Okay, it seems the trick is to actually align the screw holes perfectly and then push slowly until we are aligned with the screws, screw holes that were holding the secondary mirror in place. 
Okay, now it looks to be in place. It looks well aligned. The mirror is pointing towards the focuser. We have this spider vane and those two collimation screws perpendicular to the focuser tube. Everything seems to be fine. So now I can just screw in the screws that came with the kit and align, make sure that the spider itself is parallel to the tube. So let's do that. And to check the alignment with the tube, I'm just going to uh, use a caliper to basically measure the distance between the edge of the tube and the edge of the spider and make sure that it's constant throughout. And the distance seems to oscillate between 30.3 millimeters and 30.7 millimeters. This is within 0.4 millimeters. We're gonna let it be like that. And I can also place this back and also remove my mask. I'm good, I'm not messing, at least not breathing onto mirrors anymore. And here are how things look like. Doesn't look magnificent? Absolutely beautiful. I now need to paint these areas because I had to remove the felt paper to make things uh, fit inside. And of course, recollimate the telescope. My favorite activity. I'm completely done. I've redone the collimation. The collimation was ridiculously simple with this new uh, spider. And maybe it's also the washer that I put on the back of the secondary mirror that made it much easier. But it took me five minutes like to start really from scratch with the secondary mirror to place it at the right spot. Just changed the angle, finished. And I think one of the big reasons was when I was messing with the three collimation screws, they didn't, they didn't impact the actual secondary rotation. And that made a huge, huge difference. I feel like this is how the telescope should be delivered with a better focuser here. And then we'd be perfect. And I could recommend this for beginners as well, but nope. So anyway, I'll be waiting for a night where I can actually put this telescope to the test. There is a small chance that it could be tonight, although the weather forecast tells me no, but the southern sky right now is clear. We'll see, fingers crossed. Now I'll put away my old little spider and all of the stuff that I used to uh, improve this telescope. It's been a lot of fun actually tinkering with that thing. And uh, let's try to image and see what the results are. See you once I have some results. We're heading into the rainy season in Japan, but I was really wanting to see the results of that spider and primary mask. Uh, and like what effects it has on stars. So I did manage to get a few exposures in between the clouds on the uh, very bright star uh, Al-Qaeda, which I put off center intentionally just to make it even worse for the system to show a clean star image. And while I was doing so, I first focused manually and then via autofocus. And the claim that you can almost achieve perfect focus by just making sure that you have perfectly nice and smooth new Newtonian spikes uh, actually was true. I originally did manual focus by just looking at the diffraction spikes slowly come together and then come to a point where they're like perfectly sharp and thin. And I took note of that focus position and then I performed an autofocus and it reached the exact same point, one step away, one focuser step away. So absolutely uh, incredible. Although I think part of it is the experience that I have, even without any masks, uh, focusing on stars without any information, I'm usually extremely close to the best focus. So that's one thing that was quite interesting because those diffraction spikes are truly really well defined. Um, and let's look at the results. First on the screen you have like without the modification, so without the new spider and without the primary mask. And this is on an image of M63, I believe. Yes, here it is. And we can see that all of the stars, they have like one spike coming out in this direction. Um, it's like one of the primary mirror clips, right? And then we have maybe another one here. It's like a jet in, in those directions. So that's one thing we notice. One thing we also notice is like the spikes themselves, they're not pointy, they are diffuse and they're like going far, far away. Like all the way here, we can see the spike. All the way here, we can see still the spike. And almost like here, I can still guess the spike. It's kind of like diverging away like that. So it's like a very um, long kind of spike. So that's due to the spider, the way that the default sp spider is, uh, is built. And 
the um, the spray here from the star comes from the primary mirror clips. So that's what we are trying to get rid of with the new system. Uh, and this particular star here is not that bright, especially compared to al -Qaeda. So I truly put the new system with the spider veins and the primary mirror mask at a disadvantage by testing it on al -Qaeda. But let's see what it looks like on al -Qaeda. Here we are. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. Like, yep. So first, the diffraction spikes. They're beautiful. They're very sharp, they're very pointed, and they stop very quickly, despite the uh, star being so bright. And the star itself is like, it's uniform in its uh, brightness. The only shadows that we see are basically the shadows of the secondary holder uh, veins. So yeah, I mean, that looks perfect. It really shows an improvement in the shape of the stars. So if you're a perfectionist, it makes sense to have such a primary mirror mask and it makes sense to also replace the default uh, spider vein. Uh, the collimation with the new spider vein uh, was also much easier, but it will remain to be seen in the long term how well it will hold the collimation. And I'll look forward to do long integration times uh, on targets as soon as the rain outside <laughs> stops and we stop getting clouds. So that might take a little while. I hope it's in time for the supernova in M101, but we'll see. So is the full set worth uh, 200 euros? Well, I don't know. If you're a guy who doesn't really care that much about star shapes, uh, like I am slash used to be, maybe. I'm, I'm like, now that I've spent so much time collimating and adjusting the telescope, I'm like trying to get the best shapes, which is very non-quiv. It's not lazy at all. I really should be careful there. Uh, but if, you know, if you're fine with the default configuration and, you know, your collimation holds well, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I went in the other direction. If it ain't broke, fix it. And yes, the result is undeniably better. And if it does hold collimation better, uh, if it makes the scope overall more stable, then yeah, I mean, it could absolutely be worth 200 euros. It does bring the, the total cost of the system to uh, around 700 US dollars, as I was mentioning. But 700 US dollars is still like cheaper than a lot of refractors and certainly cheaper than most fast refractors that also have 500 millimeters focal length. So you be the judge. Again, the links to these, to these accessories uh, will be in the description down below. So have a look. While you're on your way, leave a comment, leave a like. It truly helps the video get noticed on YouTube. If you want to further support the channel, you may want to join as a member or even better, join my Patreon. Again, link in the description. It truly helps the channel out and it helps me like buy the equipment, buy the software, etc. that I need to make those YouTube videos. So thank you so much everyone for your support. Thank you so much for watching. It means a huge lot to me. Uh, but you know, besides all of that, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars or at the raindrops in my case, and I'll see you next time.